six, nine, Hello there YouTube, today we have a new video and with this new video I want to introduce to you Anna. Anna is a new series I want to start, it's experimental. Anna is shortened for Ames Noobs Academy. We're going to show the people who are new to the 3D printing world, show them how to make stuff that is for expert users. So for example a Voron tool head that we're going to do a stealth burner, we're going to go over what stealth burner is about and we're going to look at the upgraded versions of it. Well, kind of a completely new tool head in this situation, but we're going to show you guys who don't know anything about these Voron printers or any kind of printers in general, we're going to start that journey. On this first episode of Anna, I'm going to talk to you guys about the stealth burner and what stealth burner is about and what it performs like and also what the upgrades are going to be performing like still in making. So let's start about the Stealth Burner, which is a really good looking, in my opinion, a tool head in the top for the parts cooling. It's using 5015 fans. Well, you have to tinker around the fan to make it fit inside of the tool head here. And on the back side of it, you have the canvas holder, which this is a breakout board for the canvas. It's using for the LED lights, parts cooling fan and uh, a hot end fan is all connected through here. And with this portion here, here, you connect it to the tool head here, which is a canvas. This one is the SB2209. So you connect it to this portion here. Let me open it up so you can see it better. So this is the canvas, which holds everything that is going through normally to your tool head one by one is all being collected here and with one USB cable, well, it's kind of a USB, it's using the USB protocol, it's just one cable is coming here. It has a CAN L and a CAN H and also power. So that's coming here and through this cable only, that's going to your UTC, is going to make it work. Everything that's on connected on here is going to be connected on your Raspberry Pi. So Raspberry Pi is working from this end, so, you can see that here in the front bit, these pins here, they align with these. Let me demonstrate it how to put it together. So you push this one here, just like you line it up first. When it's perfectly lined up, you just push it in and it goes in just like this. So when it's pushed in, you see that uh, this is the Clockworks 2, which is an extruder that you can partially 3D print and also have it working pretty well. Well, if you're not going to push your printer to the highest speeds, it's fine. Uh, but we want to make the Voron 2.4 that we have a beast. And on that journey, we need to make uh, an upgraded version of this. So we need to get rid of the canvas here, 22 SB2209. We need to get rid of the clockworks. We need to get rid of the whole thing, actually. So let me see. We have trying to assemble this version, which is a CPAP version. So it's going to use an external fan that is going to push air. Parts cooling fan is going to be used through that. So when that happens... This video is sponsored by PCBWay.com, the world's go-to supplier for premium custom circuit boards. Tell us what you need, then let us design and manufacture your PCBs to the highest level. Low print runs and 24-hour turnarounds with assembly starting from just $5. Get an instant quote and join our online community at PCBWay.com. It's you don't need a parts cooling fan on top. We were making this and then we found this version. And we're going to talk about this version later, but more about this is on top of here. It doesn't look pretty, I know, but there is a Konami the screen that's going to was going to be on top of here. But I think still this version here, which is a completely different one, is going to outperform even the CPAP version because we were going to use a regular fan on the CPAP. That's auxiliary fan type and too much back pressure is the problem there. So we're going to go with this setup. I know it looks too much. It's overwhelming. There is too much going on here, but this is as big as this one in size. Well, in length, at least if you compare it to this one, I think this is even a little bit shorter. It is broader, yes I know, but it's using twice a 5015 fan instead of one that is on top of here. And each fan has a canal that's going through the hot end here, which is a Fatus Rapido 2 Ultra High Flow Plus version. So it's all made to work together. 
in the middle of here there's a fan that's going to cool the hot end itself and as a upgrade as well instead of the clockworks 2 we're using orbiter v2 as the extruder so on the back here we're still waiting for the canvas ebb 36 which will go on back of here and all these cables that you see from the fans and everything is going to be connected to that that's going to be most likely in the next video because we don't have it yet but it's like tomorrow or the day after it's going to arrive we're going to flash it and we're going to put it on here and then make the tool head finished so we can start doing some test prints with that but the best speed that we could get from the stealth burner was around 275 millimeters per second which is okay for a regular printer but we are making as i mentioned a beast so that's not good enough for us for a regular user i think that's more than enough that's why you see lots of uh, vorons with the stealth burner instead of the mantis the mantis is for fast printing and it's going to outperform the stealth burner and there are like a mantis xol1 xol2 this is just a mantis without the xol so this one is the one i've found on uh, github so if you want to try this one out you just follow the links in the description below but i'm also using different kind of back plate here that is uh, a little bit uh, made to work with the clicky probe as you can see on the bottom here this portion was there but we changed it a little bit so inside thanks to retro d he made uh, changes to it and because of those changes it's really easy to put the cable in there we still didn't install that part but you can see that the magnets and everything are already there so if you look from this angle it's sitting perfect it's underneath the nozzle here which is how it's supposed to be so other than that the system itself is um, really sturdy i think once you understand how it's been put together it's really easy to do maintenance on this I think it's even easier to do maintenance than on the stealth burner. It's the manner of the design, how it's put together. But I'm not saying that the stealth burner is bad. It's just outdated, in my opinion, for fast 3D printing. You can use different kinds of hot ends here, different kinds of, you can even, different kinds of extruder. You can use Sherpa Mini on here as well. There are so many you can see on the GitHub page. You will be able to just mix and match everything that's that you're going to use on this mantis here that's why i think this is a really nice tool head to try on everything is separately available so this part we took from the printables and this part is also from printables the rest these front uh, channels to get these 50 15s to cool down your prints is also from the github page itself there is also a middle portion here that's going to hold everything together yeah that is in my opinion a really nice tool head so we're really excited to try this on and because I wanted to make an update video that's why we are now here to talk about these and if this is not performing well enough we might turn back to a CPAP version but it's not going to be a stealth burner CPAP it's going to be actually a Mantis style CPAP that you know we can even try to make instead of these we can make a hose here in the middle that divides itself into two and then you can have a CPAP version of this as well. CPAP is really nice, but it's really loud. So that's why we want to use a, not the real CPAP fan on there because we like 3D printing quietly. Well, unacceptable margin because in my opinion, the K1 Max and the Bamboo X1 Carbon is too loud when it's printing. Most of the time when you're using the auxiliary fan, it becomes too loud. But other than that, the system itself, the motors and everything, are also allowed on the K1 Max and the X1 Carbon. So that's why we are really excited to make a 3D printer of the Voron that's going to print really quietly. Uh, but yeah, you will hear the double fans here on the print itself. So let me show you guys what the CPAP version that we are making is. So this is the CPAP system that we are going to use if everything else fails. It, the complete design it comes from uh, Canrock87 or dear friend he sent us this this is still a better version there's going to be another version of this a smaller one because this is pretty bulky it does in my opinion look really nice don't get me wrong it's i think it's really a nice model you put this on the outside of your printer and then through the cpap hose it goes onto the printer and from that from there is an adapter that goes to this hose that will go eventually to your tool head so this is an auxiliary fan that uh, k1 max is using as well 
So, and the bamboo is using this one as well. So it's the auxiliary fan that we're going to use as a CPAP system, which should work in theoretical standards, but it all depends on the uh, back pressure. And the back pressure is like the enemy of this system. And that's why when you put it on the, the stealth burner like this, there is too much back pressure and that is the thing that we want to avoid in the system and that's why this is on the second plan for now but it might be uh in the near in the next uh, video it might be implemented into this tool head here and let's try first if this tool head is going to work really well with this system with the double 50 15s i think it's gonna but we never know until we try it of course Put in the comment section if you like the series of Anna so we, I can make more of these explanation systems and even if you guys want I can disassemble this for example and reassemble it. Anything is possible in Anna so it's for the people who really don't understand or want to know more about 3D printing uh, solutions. So I hope you guys like this video. Hit the thumbs up if you like the video. Hit the thumbs down if you didn't like the video. Subscribe to my channel if you would like to see more content like this in the future. Bye!